Immunotherapy is a hugely exciting advance in cancer, specifically for certain kinds of cancer where traditional chemotherapy has had little to no benefit. And so it means that certain cancers that were people were dying in short order from now potentially have a treatment option that can make a huge difference in their overall disease trajectory and buy them an incredible amount of time. There's actually even a small portion of patients who get cured with immunotherapy. So there's a lot of buzz. It doesn't apply to everybody, but there's a reason behind the buzz. And it feels like what we want to cover is why is that important for palliative care practitioners? What is it that palliative care clinicians need to know about this therapy in order to be able to kind of walk down that trajectory with patients because it's changing the trajectory of those patients? The thing I think about the most is respect the excitement, and I stole that from Mary, actually, <laughs> because there is a lot of hype. There's a lot of media coverage. There are commercials on TV. Patients are very excited about it. Oncologists are extremely excited about it. And in palliative care, we're kind of used to seeing treatments at the end of life being dangled, the carrot being dangled, um, things that may not be so helpful, um, but physicians are saying, let's just try it. But this is different. Yeah, I think that's true. So to appreciate, because I feel like people often from palliative care see the perspective of treatments offered and then they see them not work. Right. And so they've developed appropriately a worry when this new treatment is dangled that it's going to be presented as much better than it really is. And so trying to hold that excitement and respect that and yet still have the possibility of what if things don't go well. I think there's two other things that we really want people to take away. And so one is that these drugs work really differently than traditional anti-cancer therapies. And one way in which they're different is their toxicities. And so one of the things we're gonna cover is common specific toxicities to immunotherapy and how to manage them. I think almost universally the oncologist will help manage them, but things like fatigue, where we in palliative care have AO, we're gonna do this, this, and this, have an additional kind of differential in patients on immunotherapy that I think it's important for us to be aware of. Otherwise, patients might call us and we react to it and, and miss an important kind of potential toxicity of a therapy. And these toxicities can be horrible, but we can get people through the toxicities mm -hmm. so they can stay on the therapy. That's a huge part of this. We do that with chemotherapy a lot too, but we've learned so much in the past two, three years yeah. about the toxicities and how to treat them. And um, there are actual national guidelines to um, guide all of us in treating the toxicities. We as palliative care providers see the sickest of the sick. And we're used to having goals of care conversation and trying to help people understand and accept that their journey with cancer may be coming to an end. But this changes things. It may not be coming to an end. So um, I've had a, an oncologist say to me, I want to give immunotherapy to everybody in hospice because <laughs> they, want, they might respond. And that's, that's a really big difference. And I think the piece that's hard about that is that means we have to sit with uncertainty for a much longer period of time. One of the other things that's really different about immunotherapy is the way in which people respond. Right? Traditional chemotherapy, you get your bang for your buck up front. So if you haven't had a response in six to eight, 12 weeks, certainly, you're not gonna get one. Whereas immunotherapy, and I used to think, well, that's just a drug company trying to make us keep them on their drugs mm -hmm. longer. I've seen people whose cancer has grown the first point of imaging and then subsequently shrunk. I have seen people have nearly fatal toxicities, stop the drug, and 17 months later are still responding, meaning their cancer is smaller than it was before they started. So these are extreme responders, and that's the hype that the oncologists feel, and that's not true for everybody. So we do still need to, I think, offset the potential for over-optimism, but we also need to sit with the uncertainty is that even though it's growing, it's not necessarily time to kind of get everybody ready for your, your treatment's not gonna work, your time is really short, because they still could have a longer period of time. And I think that uncertainty is hard to sit with. And that's a learning curve as a, as a clinician in palliative care is to kind of 
not sort of be, oh, well, the end is only so far, and our job is to prepare for that, mm -hmm. but to also entertain the possibility that it actually could be a much longer period of time. And that uncertainty is it's hard. Which way is this going to go? And it's not predictable. Right. Um, we don't know who's going to respond and who's not going to respond and who's going to get these horrible toxicities and who might sail through it. I think we're learning, trying to learn more mm -hmm. about that, but it's, it's a big question mark right now.